And if you understand the concept of culture matters, it's moving with the trends, moving with the topics, moving with what's popping mm. on timelines, on um, the websites and stuff. There's always something about ethnic minorities always taking an L. There's always. actually always something. Always. And as much as obviously like it's a new different angles or whatever, it all boils down to the same point. Racist for dead. That's basically what it boils down to. And I, I'm actually sick of it. I'm, anyway, I'm patiently waiting for a riot. I'm not saying I'm going to kill anyone or I'm going to be violent against anyone. I'm just saying I'm waiting for more aggressive forms of action. I, I will say song, that. Though? More than talking. Can I say to the Home Secretary that the relationship between this country and the West Indies and Caribbean is inextricable. The first British ships arrived in the Caribbean in 1623 and despite slavery, despite colonisation, 25,000 Caribbeans served in the First World War and Second Yo! It's lit! I'm back! I'm back, baby. Just, someone get him out. I'm back. Someone get this boy out. You missed me, didn't you? We didn't. Ya? We didn't. I'm back. I'm back. We had in the so building. much fun about him. Samuel Eni. Let's go, man. We're running. What's good? Even he's even got like a little do rag, trying to be Come a bit on. American. You know what I mean? Come on. I like Pathetic. the makeup today. Stop. Pathetic. Oh. Oh, see that shower up in it. Okay. And we're rolling. Let's go. <laughs> I thought I thought what they've done is disgusting. Mm. It's harsh. If you've lived here all your life, all your life. That the family here have a foundation here, you shouldn't be removed like that. Especially the way they're trying to remove them, it's disgusting. So at the end of World War II, um, England was like really destroyed. So they invited a bunch of like a bunch of people, specifically from the Caribbean, to come and like help rebuild the nation. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of given these kind of you know um, documents that allowed them to come, but they weren't real passports, any real citizen. Some people have been here for 44 years, mm -hmm. and then the Home Office like basically started issuing you know. Um, started trying to deport people and people were losing their jobs and everything and they weren't able to apply for citizenship even though they've been here for long. It's been going on for longer but it has only just come to media attention because yeah. of David Lamy. Mm -hmm. Is it David Lamy? Gorillion Amber Rudd yeah. in the House of Commons. It's not even her fault. It's not Partly her fault. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't her fault. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. It's partly her fault still. But well, it's, it's Theresa May. That's where it rests at the end of the day. It's Theresa Yeah, but May. then it, it goes further back than that as well. Yeah, but Theresa May was Home Secretary for how long? It's true, Before it's true. Amber Rudd. It's true, it's true, so, it's very and true. And it's the Home Secretary's job. I mean, I feel like, I think, okay, the thing is, I think people need to realise as well, like, when, like, Caribbeans didn't just come in the, what was it, the 50s? The f like, they came, they've been here for quite a long time in, yeah. the, in the UK, and I think a lot of the, obviously there's a generation, as I said, where an influx of Caribbeans came over, but Caribbeans have been in the country for even longer than the 40s, 50s, 60s. They've been around for a long time. Um, and I think if you do, a lot of people research that, there was a time where there was a lot of people that were, I think, working for the British, whether it's mm. army or whatever it was, they were coming to the UK, Interest. doing their work, and then they had to leave it. Like, they weren't allowed to stay, so they would have to go. Um, it came it was also for, like, Southeast Asian communities as well, when they'd come to the UK. They would maybe if they were sailors or whatever, and then they would work, and then they had to leave, kind of thing, go back to their own countries. So we've had in the UK, we've had a lot of people of colour, even though I don't like that term, in the UK for a long, long time. So in terms of this scandal, one, it's really sad that mm. this is what is the, like the ultimate, uh, the straw, the fight, like the kind of thing that's happening to such a huge community of people that have come to this country to work to do the jobs that people in them days did not want to do. Essentially, so it's almost like a bit of a slap in the face, to be honest. Because it's like- Is she saying, it's why like do they me, have it, to go back though? No, 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 there's some, there's some people that have been sent back. No, that's true, sorry, I'm corrected. And some people that have been sent back because they're saying, even though you've lived here all your life, we don't have papers for you. Luke. So oh. they're lying. Even though they're talking with a big British accent, mm. they're trying to say, by law, you're not, you don't belong here. But they're saying, no, I've been here. Like, I've grown up here. From what I understand, that clearly doesn't make sense. What's he trying to do? It doesn't do? make sense. So basically... Focus on the grand film, man. What's all this, bro? For real? Like, oh, wait, was that on film? Yeah, that no, was that's bad because I might be... I might not have got it correct, correct and stuff. 
Kind of, yeah. innit? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah. 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 I mean, I mean what, what can you really say to that, to be honest? That's a, I think that... That's a bit mad. I don't know. I'm just... Don't get me for this, but I, I'm just patiently waiting for a riot or something because at this stage, you're continuously doing things to piss black people off. That's what you're doing. You're continuously trying to piss us off. And I don't really know at what stage you're going to stop or whether it's going to keep getting worse. So maybe there needs to be some sort of like aggressive action because clearly, you know, one, two, two speeches in House of Commons isn't going to fix the matter. I thought, I thought what they've done is disgusting. Mm. It's harsh. If you've lived here all your life, all your life, that the family here have a foundation here, you shouldn't be removed like that. Especially the way they're trying to remove them, it's disgusting. Especially when they brought all of them here. It wasn't choice, it was like, oh, we're going for a better life. And they accepted them and they embraced them from the ports of Portsmouth and Southampton. Mm -hmm. I thought what they're doing is disgusting. It's uh, disgusting. But they're making changes, but I don't know if the change is going to help us benefit them because they made changes in terms of home office. Yeah, so the I person, the person stepped down, right? What? She had to, it's a she, she had to sit down. She's waved. That's what I mean. They don't make they don't make changes for us or make rules that help us in a way of a community wise. They just make rules and they just see how it goes. If it backfires, backfires. But if they can keep sweep up, sweep it underneath the carpet, then they can do that. But now with social media and stuff like that, and people connecting mm -hmm. and communicating with each other, it's got a bit better. Hundred percent, man. But it does definitely feel like there's an agenda, you know what I mean, against minorities and them being in this country and a lot of things and a lot of policies that have come and their kids, so they're all being exported. Um, they all the loads are being exported back to Jamaica when they haven't been there. You know, yeah. like some of them have never even seen. So how are you gonna get yeah. shipped back and be like, yo, go back to your? So I mean, that's been a massive, massive scandal. Oh God. And apparently, the Home Secretary just um, resigned today. So. So the person in charge of it. Yeah, the per well, the, yeah, kind of. He like they I guess they they adhere to the government. I, to, I know Theresa May gave like an apology. Um, for, for for what had happened, you know, whatever, like, whether that means anything. But I think it's like, it's not even the consensus whether this is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's like, how did this happen? Like, how how did we allow it to get to this point where people, it's not even something that, like, you know, it's not like an issue statement that you get being like, you know, in five years, if you don't do this, we're going to kick you out. People were just getting, like, notices. So I guess it's it's kind of this reality that so many people are going through and getting completely displaced. There was a thing, Amber Rudd came out and, you know, she was like, I knew nothing about the targets of deporting people. Oh, for she's lying. And then the next day a memo came out showing she was copied into the emails that there's 12,800 people needed to be forced deportations um, in 2017 and 18. So that was the numbers. They've gone for people that came over from the Caribbean, you know, even Africa to an extent. Um, after World War II to come fix the country, the economy, pay tax, things like that. And now these people can't leave the country and come back because they ain't got a passport or they haven't got that, um, you know, the right to stay here, effectively. Even though their children are British. They've had children here. They've paid tax longer than their children been alive. And they're not allowed to stay. So, you know, the government's fucked, man. For me, like, I wasn't surprised when I heard about it because a lot of the time these things happen until they can get away with it. So they were doing it because no one was watching. But as soon as mm. they're exposed, they're going to come up with all these excuses as to what happened. But... Obviously, it's a tick box system. It's a system where they've got quotas and they've got numbers to achieve, and they just went for the the demographic of people that was easiest that well, easiest to, ta to target. Old because, people, most yeah. of them are old at this point. And then yeah. we have to remember that most of these people that came here, like their ancestors, were taken from Africa, brought to the Caribbean, then colonized, and then asked to come back here to help build the country. So it's like the wealth of Britain stems from those plantations in the Caribbean in the first place. Many of these banks, such as Barclays and NatWest, were founded upon the wealth that was made from them plantations in the sugar industry. Mm. Well, you know, you know like how English people like biscuits and cakes, and mm. that became a delicacy in the UK because of the sugar trade. That's how that theme came about. So I feel like us not remembering and them not educating children on the fact that where the Great Britain got their wealth from is why these problems happen on and happen for so long. Um, I, have, I work with um, a community group based in Hackney and they are all like Windrush generation um, mm. people, that's all it okay. is. Um, and um, I did speak to them, I've spoken to them about their experiences coming over um, and that excitement of coming here, like a lot of opportunity coming here to mm. work. Um, and people being here for like their whole lifetimes, um, 
and setting up communities, like massive communities, yeah. a whole like massive communities in Hackney, massive communities in, in Brixton, different areas yeah. um, where people have really um, built their lifestyle, built their homes. Um, yeah, it must, it must be a, such a distressing um, event and period to be then told like you have to leave, to be then be displaced. Um, I think, I don't, I don't know why that change ha occurred. I don't know why it took place. Um, I can only kind of relate it to the whole um, s lockdown on immigration and mm. lockdown on um, illegal immigrants being here, stuff like that. And there not being um, enough historical, I don't know, historical research or historical understanding of the migration of um, the, the Caribbean community to um, the UK. Because I, I don't understand how yeah. it can be documented um, part of history that the Caribbeans did come over here to help build um, this country and then them it not be part of their thinking process when it comes to then how do we then treat people afterwards yeah. in the future. I, I don't understand how you can like miss that fact and... When it's so obvious. What's popping mm. on timelines, on um, the websites and stuff. There's always something about ethnic minorities. Always. Taking an L. There's always. actually always something. Always. And as much as, obviously, like, it's a new, different angles or whatever, it all boils down to the same point. Racist for dead. That's basically what it boils down to. And I, I'm actually sick of it. I'm, anyway, I'm patiently waiting for a riot. I'm not saying I'm going to kill anyone or I'm going to be violent against anyone. I'm just saying I'm waiting for more aggressive forms of action. I, I will that say solved, that. Though? More than talking. I see you looking fly today. I, I, I see you shining, a eh? Shout out to my hustlers that grind all day. I, I see you shining, a eh? I smell that gelato from a mile away. I, I see you shining, a eh? I still be a legend if I die today. Uh. I, I see you shining, I got eh? packs on the trolley. This rap shit's a hobby. I got hairs, but I'll still catch me a buddy. Nice, nice, nice album. <laughs> what do you think, bro? Nice album was good. Okay. The movie was was trash. Oh. There's no need for that movie to be there. I don't know. I see people, fake Nine fans and was real Nine fans saying though? it was a movie because he had a premiere. Actually, that doesn't solidify a movie, but you know what I mean. It was a movie based like it was a movie. Let's just call it a movie. Let's not yeah. lie. Short and I felt like a short film. Visual, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you call it, it was trash, regardless of what you call it. It wasn't the greatest. Don't know why it was there. Did, it did nothing for me. It got the attention. That's what it said. It. That's what my, my thingy said. My cousin said that there was awareness. But still, I heard people saying it was amazing. It was great. I saw it. I said, this is trash. I saw Mist pull up. I said, okay. Mm. Couple cameos. Steve, what's his name? Stephen O, the madman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple people cameo. Bear cameo. That's the, I feel that's the best part of the film. The cameos. But he's in that music video. He didn't need to do that for the whole... Yeah. Was it 29 minutes? That was a waste of time. I haven't seen the whole album. I've seen certain songs of it. I watched some of the movie, um, which was cool, man. Like, like that was sick, um, directed by Nines, but it had the the dude with the kitchen glove that goes and asks people to take the photo. That guy's going to blow up. Like, guys, like, he's done so well for himself. Just that I'm talking about, because I feel like he was the main highlight of the Nines film, man, let's be honest. And he did a really, really good job. Um, but great, man artistry you know like that's what i was saying in one of our earlier episodes which was simple like don't just put out like the same drill tracks of everyone doing the same generic thing in the estate with your mask and you know like i think when you look at the states and you look at how people are blowing up they're blowing up because they're bringing something really new creatively to the game yeah and they're bringing more to their fans and bringing more like i don't know if i rate nines or nines as one of my like you know top uk artists at all but just the fact that, cool, the album's done, um, when I, from what I could hear of, of it, it's, it's all right. I'm not going to rant and say it's the best thing I've ever heard, um, but it's all right. You know? Crop Circle, I thought it was, it was great. I thought, at first, for the first few minutes, it was just like, rah, everyone's in this. <laughs> and for a minute, even Miss Jocelyn from back in the day, mm. he brought her out. I was like, you know what? It was cool. I mean, I wasn't taking the acting too seriously. I was thinking at first it was a little bit of a comedy, whichever. But even Nines, I mean, Nines played that role to a T. Like, even though it's his lifestyle, he wasn't acting, way. exactly. I mean, the amount of people he reminds me of that I know where it's like the two phone, warm ring, just that whole thing was, yeah, it was, it was sick. I thought the way it was concluded, I don't think there'll be a part two, which is unfortunate. Um, but hopefully this has given, you know, some people um, some inspiration to do more of it. The one thing I was quite happy to see is on the credits at the beginning, executive produced by Caroline. I was happy with that. Because I was thinking, you know what, kill him with the work, B. 
Like, if this is what you're putting out as your work, just kill them with the work. Stay quiet and kill them with the work. And, you know, with all the politics around that name recently, it was good to see. Um, obviously, the crop circle as well. Did you see that was live? Yeah, that was, was actually real yeah, life. Real, that wasn't yeah. no graphics yeah, or nothing. That was real. Um, but Nines' visuals have always been cool. I mean, I see you shining, eh? There's a, there was a couple moments I had to pull up in the sense of the weed on the counter, at the breakfast table. Then there was one that I didn't even clock the first few times I watched it. But when he's saying, like, I went LV and then did the same mm -hmm. today... When he's in the mirror looking, he's wearing one outfit, and in the other, mm. in the other side, he's wearing something different. Mm -hmm. It was things like that, and then obviously the meditation pose in the middle of the block, uh, you know. I feel like uh, the, he's actually at the. I don't think any major label could do what they've done for Nines, except for XO. I think they have really taken their time out on him and to give him what he needs to deliver what he wants to deliver. And I think if he signed under a major label like Warner or something, I don't think it would have been the same result. So I have to say, obviously, big up to people like Caroline who have actually been working on that whole uh, Nines album and project, etc. Et and anyone and that's on the team as well that have been really pushing. And, and I think in order to have all that money to actually go and create a crop circle and all these little things, I think that's really cool. And I think he does... I like the fact that UK artists are testing the waters a lot more, pushing boundaries with their visuals um, and really taking the time out to really craft yeah. what they're putting out. Mm. It's not just, here's an, like, to do an album, it's, it's one thing to do an EP, it's one thing to do a mixtape, it's one thing to really do an album. Yeah. And an album to me is like a body of art, like it's seriously, like something you really have to work on. Mm. And yeah, that's why there's a lot of people that are still stuck on the EP mixtapes because it's really hard to do an album it's not easy and for someone like nines and his type of rap as well to be able to do that i think it's something that's very commendable uh, the album. I, I know you've, i know you've listened to it because he course, is like the plug for new music <laughs> us music uk music different music genres he's a plug for everything so, so i touched back on wednesday um, mm. you sent that information when was it friday friday so i literally listened to nine's album this past weekend um I like most of it. Nice, nice is different for me because I've always said, whenever you, what do people come into rapping for? Because clearly, like yeah. he says it countless times in his bars. Obviously, he does his whole shopping thing and stuff. But music is, I, I can see the passion that he wants to make music and see a way out for that and make music his pinnacle. That's and so nice. Massive stream of income. And um, for me, obviously, listen to the album. It is better than the first one. I definitely like tracks like Oh My SL Bodied. That track. Wow. I'm telling you that from now. Okay. If you haven't heard Nine's album, go check it out. S L O My it features him, Young Fume, Tiggs the Author, and Nines. Oh, Tiggs. I like Tiggs. No, Tiggs, Tiggs and Nines, they do make a sick collaboration. Um, there's also a track called Haze, uh, Liz. Um, I'm, I'm telling you my personal favourites, the ones that I really like. See, I told you, it's already cleared up, mate. Already <laughs> knows the titles, the lyrics, probably. <laughs> no. What I'm saying is that the album was good. The movie didn't make sense for me. Mm. I don't care what crop circle you want to bring into this. I'm shy rattle man. But the, the visuals didn't make sense for me. Ah. Besides, the, besides the end, when they had the, like, the crops, and you saw the crop from High View, was Bird of High View, was amazing. Mm. But I can't rely. Caroline did well. But she, she, no, nah, she, you have to give a shout out to Caroline because okay. she did well. Do your lick my thing. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I, like that. I like that one. That's a good one. Do your, do your thing. I feel like she did well for as A and R, A and R that project. It came out beautiful. But I feel to take the opposite opinion of what you said. Like I think the the visual was 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 decent. I, I like the um, depiction of the hood. Do you get what I'm saying? I, I'm tired of seeing the hood being depicted. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I feel like it's such a boring narrative to see. I agree with you. Constantly, like maybe for me, for someone who's who's lived in that environment all my life, it's like, fam, why are we gonna keep on perpetuating ourselves as this image? But someone, when I said that, one of my friends pointed out that you know what. That's the life that Nine sees every day. Still. I said that. Oh, was it you? I said that. Smart motherfucker. Thank you. I don't know. Let's not. Let's just spud. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> yeah, this this motherfucker said that. But yeah, so I think yeah, like you know, that's his life. That's the life that he sees every day. Cool. Fair enough in it. I won't criticize that. The album in itself. <sighs> That was disappointing, man. Wait, I saw it came out on the same night as J. Cole's thing. J. Cole's album was average. That was. No, shut up, man. Look, you can't look, say Nine's look, album look. was good and then say J. Cole's album was we, average. We, I know um, this is mad. I'm not, I, know, I know I'm contradicting myself in the future, but we, we sometimes we have to judge albums differently. You know what I mean? No, we do. I don't I judge. Do, I don't I judge. I do judge, I do I judge every album differently. I, I know. The songwriting's there, but then to also like go out of your way to kind of 
direct that. And, you know, people don't understand. I don't think, even though it might look simple, it's not like, oh, bro, can you come and just shoot these scenes with me? Like, that was a big project, you know, and he had to put a lot of money and stuff just into the idea of it. So I think, like, to Nines, like, shout out for you for elevating the game and showing people that you need to be bringing something new, even though we're in this closed community. And that, more importantly, big ups to all the people that have been talking about it, even the fact that we, that this became a topic on this show, because that shows that Nines is doing the right thing, because everyone's now, you know, incorporating it into their story. Like, I had to listen to the full album just to come here, which is like, it's great marketing to do that extra step when you're doing a release, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I fuck with Nines, man. And the album itself is solid. Oh My is my favourite track at the moment. No, yeah, I love the album. The album's my new car, my car album at the moment. That song with Dave is my favourite, mm, especially yeah. and and um, make it up to you with the guy from Western, mm. and obviously I see you shining, eh? That one as well. Mm. Um, I just think it's good that a British artist has put out an album and then put out a visual representation of the album because I feel like a lot of rap artists don't have the creative aspect of their music um, to, um, completed. I feel like they just focus on the music and the album and don't think about the visual aspects. And I think the creative side and your creative team is just as important as your music because it's a visual representation of what they're trying to portray to the audience. Um, it's very evident that he's got some good creative people in his corner. Um, so yeah, I, I rate Nines. Um, I think, I like, do you know what else I like about Nines? He kind of puts out a project and then he goes missing. I like that because a lot of people, they're more hyped than talent. And I think with Nines, his artistry speaks louder than the hype around him and, where, and, the, and the history that he mm. comes from. So I respect that as an I artist. I think that's also a part of I don't think it's necessary the choice of going missing. I think that's circumstantial as well. Because okay. obviously someone like Nines, mm -hmm. you've got to look at, he hasn't been able to do shows majority mm -hmm. of the time. It's true, a lot it's true. Of the time. Recently he did Boiler Room, which was great to see, and now he's announced his tour dates. Um, got like four dates, I think. Yeah, three mm -hmm. or four dates, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it's circum radio don't play the shit, but again, he says he doesn't no, care that's, about that's that. That's changing. Gradually. Yeah, that's changing. I see changing. Shining A, I think, is the first it's record, changing. record that's going on playlist, but... Other than that, you know, yeah. But at the same time, content-wise, they're not gonna put that type of shit on there. They're not gonna put a guy like Nines on there, especially with all the stuff around his name. Obviously, he was mm. in the bin not too long ago, you know. But you know, good on him. I think he's gonna be around for a long time because he's got content. No. But the, no, no, Nines really came through with his body of work. The short That's film, good. I can understand that as well because he kind of put on people that didn't really need to be put on, but they've yeah. got like a social platform. Yeah. Um, and I've always wondered if people that are who have social media platforms can they actually act? Do you know what I mean? That's always been the correlation. Yeah. Could they, they really So act? wait, what's the, what what's do you the, think of that? Do, can, do you think that they can act? I feel like for what Nines put out in that role, yeah. it's fine because okay. they're playing themselves. Yeah, there isn't really true. that much yeah. difference. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not playing a character that's not really out of your comfort zone. You're Definitely. playing people that you're already comfortable with. Like Princess Amundi, he was a comedian, funny, doing yeah. the whole thing. He was a, he was a, a postman. Mm. Not really... You know what I mean? You're not yeah. really testing the limits of being an actor, but at the end of the day, he still did a good job. Um, what's your thoughts on the Nines album? Because I could talk on it. Um, oh. I haven't taken it in, because I'm, I'm just one of those, I'm a bit stubborn. I like to listen to things when I want to listen to things. Mm. I, like, um, I like to just let the buzz go, okay. and then take it in myself, take it in slowly, and then just absorb it like that. But I think one thing that I have um, notice, I feel like, you know, like a lot of artists, like they release singles, then singles, then maybe a little EP, then maybe a little whatever. I just feel like he's just in his, he's trying to do his own thing. You yeah. know, now in this day and age in the music scene to put out an album, mm. you know, it's a big step. I know, obviously, he's not many people the one put out or whatever, yeah, but yeah. just not in many. general, like t as in again as well, yeah, put yeah. out another album, a body like, of work, yeah. Body of work. It's like, it's not common. So bringing it back to the nines thing. Go for it, Land. As far as, when it comes to me, I want to see artist development. I want to see progression. And that's to what me, no, no, no. Nines is still talking okay. about the same life that he was talking about in the first thing. He's like, he's, what was the first one? One foot in. One foot in was the one at SPTV. Henry so he's, he's still got one foot in, basically. Yeah. You didn't get the other foot in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a good one. I'll talk you off. I'll talk you off. <laughs> 